We're all together again, Sunday morning, Sunday, October 4th, for World Communion Sunday. We're so glad that you're here, and we're so glad that we're going to be able to hear from many different parts of the Presbytery of San Francisco shares uh, videos of different parts of this service, and parts of it will be live, and parts of it will be um, recordings that others around the Presbytery are sharing this same service and message from the Reverend Roland Gordon um, from San Francisco, and we're excited to hear a, a message on love from him today. Of course, we're um, Community Presbyterian Church of Pittsburgh and First Congregational Church of Antioch, ecumenical community where we love to say, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And we encourage you to take a look at our announcement page uh, to feel welcome today in the household of God. We trust that you'll experience some things that are familiar and maybe some things that are new. But um, this will be one of our most diverse uh, services ever with leadership from people from different congregations around the Presbytery of San Francisco today. <clears throat> of course, our announcements look like this. And um, we're willing to email them to you if you had a problem finding the link on the email. But um, uh, do take a little closer look at the emails because there's some new formatting that's co coming through Constant Contact. And our, um, all of our prayer requests, our Wednesday afternoon um, social hour link is in here. Um, the Tuesday link uh, is the same one from when I led the last Tuesday morning. If you want to make sure that um, maybe we'll have Elaine send out another e-blast with information because our, our Tuesday morning study will be starting up again this week. And if you wanted to give uh, anything to the matching grant that the Christians are doing to help us um, help other uh, young students from East County get uh, in or stay in school at Los Madonna's College, please write scholarship fund on the memo line of your check and you can mail it to Merdell and her uh, snail mail address is in the announcement page as well but if you want to participate in this um, matching grant for um, young people uh, we're doing that and then Tuesday we will be starting up with our sacred conversations on race again and if you want to join us on this this will be a continuation of the um, reimagining the police or defunding the police conversation that we um, read so much about weeks ago, but we'll be kind of bringing everything back and then deciding what the future of our education looks like in coming weeks. And we might even be willing to look at other books like White Privilege or a new book called Cast um, for us to read together and discuss in the future. Of course, our Wednesday social hour is the same link that you have in there. And we do have um, some denominational offerings. The United Church of Christ is receiving the neighbor in need offering. And we uh, watched a little video from the UCC last week. And so here's a little video from the Presbyterian side of the family. to make sure that my friends and family are okay and safe from this pandemic. And I've also been praying to God to make sure that they all stay healthy and strong through this time. I have been checking in on my neighbors across the street who are 93 and 96 years old. I bring them vegetables from our garden and chat with them to keep them company. This has been a great way to share God's love during this time, which can often feel lonely and isolating. The way I've been showing love to my neighbors over this quarantine, I've gone to check on them, called them, and just talk to my friends and family, making sure everybody's doing okay. It's by making paper flowers and giving them to senior citizens. I am loving my neighbors by saying a prayer to the Lord every night for my family, neighbors, and friends so that a shield of protection can be over them. My grandma, she just got surgery done a couple weeks ago, and I've been helping her out a lot. My friends asked for help on editing their videos, and I gave them a tutorial on how to get better. I was happy that I could help them, even though that I can't meet them in real life. Hi! This time of COVID, I've been really busy um, hosting an arts and crafts stand for, um, and using the money to give to families in need. 
making posters for Black Lives Matter and sea otters, and writing letters, um, letters to some of my friends, and making chalk designs in the streets and in our driveway. I show support by donating food and donating clothes, and I pray for the people that are sick from Corona. Recently, I have been volunteering my time a few mornings a week to repackage rice and beans for Monument Crisis Center. This has been a way to serve those in our community who are currently facing food insecurity, to share God's love with them and to let them know that we care. When my friend was moving to New Mexico, I prayed for her and I went to her house and said goodbye and gave letters and gifts. Um, by giving them faith because my neighbor got breast cancer, staying away from them so that then they don't get germs. I show support by helping friends and family when they need it, and people that are sick, I pray so they can feel better. My neighbor was like sick, and so I went over and comforted them. And they just kind of rented it to me, and I was just like, cool. I show su support by calling family and friends and neighbors and praying for everybody. We write on the driveways with chalk. So we put food like in this. the food, yeah. food pantry. Mm -hmm. And we oh. also mm -hmm. um, use sticker paper to, to, to uh, make words to make this sentence. We all are in this together hope. Every day, me and my family Pray for those people who have coronavirus, and we hope they get better soon. I pray for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Hi, I'm Bryce Weeby, Director of Special Offerings for the Presbyterian Church USA. Each of the young people in this video shared just a bit about what might make for peace in, at home and around the world. You and your congregation can be a part of active peacemaking efforts by your participation in the Peace and Global Witness Offering on October 4th. Go to peaceusa.org slash peace dash global to learn more. Thank you. Okay, Mary. Okay, how can how can anybody beat that for crying out loud? <laughs> um, yes, my my day to do the minute for mission for uh, peace and global witness, but in in addition to just our local everybody's that we are praying for, um, this is kind of a worldwide thing. And the thing that I'm going to talk a little bit about today is the fact that HIV and AIDS is still a worldwide issue. And this um, little piece goes, it takes place in Malawi, M-A-L-A-W-I, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. It is in Africa. Malawi. But, um, say that again, Will? Malawi. Malawi, okay. That's where Bob okay. Flagel did his mission trip he talked to us about. Oh, really? Okay, well, that's a connection, that's good. Um, but Malawi Matters is 100% volunteer driven group from a church in um, South Bend, Indiana. And through their peace and global witness, they have been able to help with this organization in Malawi and um, other, other um, parts of the Presbytery, the actual Presbytery in their local um, area, the mission agency and the whole Presbyterian Church USA are all part of this. And our portion of this um, is divided up into parts. We have 25% of this that stay right here in our own church to build God's house alongside um, our food programs mostly. And once we get back in the church, the um, Saturday Bountiful table lunch and things like that, 25% will go to the Presbytery and 50% go to the uh, mission agency for the whole church. So that is just um, a breakdown of how it how it works within the Presbytery. Go ahead and uh, when you give your offering, be sure and just put that in the memo line. If your check looks anything like mine, it's a big number and then there's about five different categories in that that I want my money to go to. So use a little sticky note for that maybe. Um, then um, 
Yeah. So in God's house, there are people of every background. There are people of every race, age, and gender. There are those of us who are blessed to be able to offer support and those whose lives are blessed by receiving support. We are the church together. So let us uh, have a short prayer here. God of peace, bring your promise to all people. May those who suffer from illness receive your healing touch and your peace, which passes all understanding. Amen. And so we come to the time to light our peace candle. And if it, from what Will said at the beginning, there are going to be video clips throughout much of the service from the Presbytery and different churches in our local area. And that what we just heard was, was one, of, one of those churches. So that's the vision for this, for this service. So we'll have different Presbyterian churches on video. And because it's World Communion Sunday, we can even expand our sense of connection to people beyond our local area and literally around the globe who will be celebrating communion today in different languages with different types of bread. And one of the traditions I've always loved about this is that Elaine used to buy international breads. It used to be her, her weekend journey before World Communion Sunday to go to different shops and buy bread from all different parts of the world. So we can do that in our imagination this morning. We won't be eating it in person. But just, I think just to take a moment to realize that this Sunday, World Communion Sunday, really calls us to remember that we are connected literally across the globe with people who share our faith, who share our sacraments, and who share our connection to the mystery of the life and death of Jesus Christ. And that as we do that, I think that we pray for peace within our own religious tradition and also are called beyond our Christian tradition to be aware that peace is needed between traditions also and around the globe, especially now with the, the virus that is global, with the fires that are local. There are so many people who are struggling, so many people who are stressed, so many people who are in need of peace. And so let us take this moment to light our candles and to now enter into prayer for peace. Let us pray. 
holy God, you have blessed us as a community. You have invited us to share our lives with each other. You have opened our hearts so we can be present to each other. And you have allowed us the gift of support as we have supported each other through this time. And we know that with that support comes the gift of peace. And this morning we pray that peace may flow from each of our hearts, our homes, this church community out into the world so that we may be messengers and peacemakers, bringers of peace to others and those who pray for peace for the entire world. We pray that peace may bring its healing power to those who are suffering in whatever form. And we offer this prayer in your many names. Amen. On behalf of the Presbytery of San Francisco, we welcome you to our first Presbytery-wide World Communion Sunday worship service. We are delighted that many of our local congregations will participate in today's worship service. The beautiful tapestry of diversity of which our Presbytery is comprised, we are all God's children. On World Communion Sunday, we celebrate Christ's peace, which extends throughout all creation. While we aren't physically together, we are together spiritually, as we will celebrate at the communion table Christ's sacrifice that we might have eternal life through him. This occasion is also a time when we join Presbyterians worldwide in sharing our resources through the peace offering to promote peacemaking and reconciliation by addressing system conflicts and injustices across the world. The Presbyterian Mission Agency advocates for peace and justice through collaborative projects of education and Christian witness, helping families in need, assisting youth and young adults, peace education and training, and community care and engagement. You can support this special offering through your local congregation or directly through a donation to the Presbyterian Mission Agency at the PCUSA website. Again, we welcome you and pray that God of peace gives you peace at all the times in all the ways. Well. Surely God is in this place. Holy ground. Surely is in this place holy ground surely God is in this place holy ground surely God is in this place holy ground surely God is in this place holy Santo Deus, por sua palavra e espírito, venha e transforme sua igreja para ser um sinal vivo de seu amor pelo mundo, onde os pobres estão cheios de coisas boas, as paredes que nos dividem 
são derrubadas e os mortos são ressuscitados para uma nova vida. Por Jesus Cristo, nosso Salvador. Amém. Let us pray these words in English together. Holy God, by your word and spirit, come and transform your church to be a living sign of your love for the world, where the poor are filled with good things, the dividing walls are broken down, and the dead are raised to new life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. from your way of truth and life. You call us to share all that we have worked together from the, for the common good. But we hoard our treasure for ourselves and deny others their daily bread. You call us to set the captives free and seek justice for the oppressed. But we live in, a, we live in fear of our neighbors and hide ourselves from our own kin. You call us to walk in newness of life and to be the witness to the resurrection, but we dwell in the valley of dry bones and keep silent about your saving love. Forgive us, God of grace. Set us free from sin, death, and fear, so that we may serve you with the gladness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Go away. 我哋通過上帝聖靈嘅恩賜，進入我哋嘅心裏邊。上帝係愛我哋、醫治我哋嘅，佢亦能夠使我哋從罪惡中間係被釋放出嚟，免去死亡。我而家係緊奉主耶穌基督嘅聖命，向大家宣告：我哋嘅罪同得赦免。感謝上帝，阿門。
May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace to everyone. Peace, everyone. This is the time you can unmute yourself as we're moving into prayer time. Peace, everyone. Good to see Peace, everybody. Everyone. Yes. Peace, everyone. So, are Peace, there... everyone. Peace, peace, peace. Are there prayers that people would like to offer this morning? You can unmute yourself and speak to all of us. Mary. I'll say, I'll say thank you for the lovely service we've had so far. It's fun seeing all different parts of the Presbytery and all different groups. So it's a great thing going on here so far. So I, I'm thankful for all the technology and all the people that are able to do all this stuff. And we should be thankful for Talitha Aho, um, Associate Pastor at Montclair Presbyterian Church for doing most of the organizing and getting all the videos to everyone. I and, recognized uh, her. The Presbytery will be um, sharing it all online at an 11 o'clock service. It's a little less personalized than ours is, but yes. yes. Well, I'm grateful for you. For This must be a difficult service to put together, so thank you, Will, for doing it. Mm -hmm. Yay, Will. Yay, Will. So let us yes. pray together. Lord, hear our, hear pray our prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Jim. I'd like for us to pray for our president. We may not agree with him, but we need to pray that he will get healthy. Amen. 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 Lord, Amen. Hear our prayer. Elaine. Um, I want to be so grateful to see you. I'm glad you had a successful trip and a safe return and a welcome home. We missed you. Thank you, Elaine. Lord. Here are our prayers. Murdell. Just continued prayers for everyone who's on the line fighting these fires and for everyone who has lost so much. We complain about the smoke, but compared to the devastation, um, there's, there's no comparison for what people have lost and are continuing to lose. So prayers for everyone affected by the fire. Amen. Amen. Lord, hear our prayers. Alice? You're still muted, Alice. Alice? He must be frozen. If she looks yeah. like she's frozen. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> Alice, we'll come back to you. It looks like you're screen. Oh, there you are. There you are. Hello. There you go. Okay. Yeah, come on. Yeah, right. yeah, you're good. First of all, I am so grateful to see those who have been ill, recovered, and so. Well, you're, you're breaking up a little bit, Alice. It looks like she's just her frozen. Her system just froze. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Well, in the spirit of what changes, you started but I ended up with Can you hear? Yes. A little bit. A little bit. You're breaking up a little. So can we pray, Alice, if you can hear us, for, for the recovery and the healing that people have experienced? Did she disappear? She's gone from my screen. I think so, yeah. Okay, well, the Spirit continued to connect us. So for Alice and her prayer of gratitude that she started with. Hello. Where else was in her heart? Here's Alice. Are you back, Alice? I think I might be back. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you're good. May. But you don't stay back. You just <laughs> left again. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Alice, well, I'm afraid your Wi-Fi good? is not strong oh. enough. Um, you might have to turn your video off for us to be able to hear you. 
So let's come back to you in a minute. Why don't you turn your video off and then um, we'll ask you to share an audio prayer in a minute. Now, we don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. Okay. Go ahead and share your prayer then. I think we can hear you right now. I can hear you now, yeah. Oops, you're frozen again. So Alice, we're gonna offer your prayer and trust the spirit that hears beyond words. Lord, hear our prayers. Are there other, other prayers? Michael. Yes, prayers of gratitude. Um, my father made it to his 90th birthday. And uh, for those of you who didn't know, we had a card party celebration um, where people were asked to send cards to him. We were hoping to get 90 cards for each year of his life. Um, and we ended up with about 110. So mm. prayers of gratitude. He had a wonderful time and he's doing well. Good. Beautiful, beautiful. Maybe he'll make it to 110. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, hear our prayer. Are there others? I am not seeing anyone else. Hi. Oh, Janice. Yes. I put it up on Zoom. I don't know if you can see it, but I'll let Janice go first. So. Okay, Donald. I didn't see you, but yeah, you're, we'll have you know. Janice? I'd like to uh, have prayers for myself. I'm having a hard time staying on my feet. I've broken another limb. Oh, no. Uh -huh. uh, and so I appreciate your prayers. Prayers for Jesus for healing. Lord, hear our, our prayers. So sorry to hear that, Janice. Yeah, that's really Donald. too bad. Mm -hmm. Donald? All right, so I'm going to start with some good news. Um, last week, or this past week, I should say, I found out that my sister, Michaela, is engaged. Yay. So I'm super excited about that. And I get to be a brother-in-law and I get to have a brother-in-law. Uh, and that's exciting. And I'm super happy for her. And, you know, it's really awesome to take a turn for good. Uh, can you guys hear me now? You're kind yeah. of breaking up a little bit. Yeah, I think there are these, either there are long pauses uh, or you're yeah, breaking up. Yeah, I'm probably Not breaking sure up. And also uh, pray for me and my roommates because this pandemic is kind of affecting all of us in different ways. And I also have some prayers in the chat. So um, just pray that there will be peace in our house. And I'll have some prayers I'm going to put in the chat right now. Okay. Okay, so for Donald's prayers, Lord, hear our prayer. Are there any others? Mary. I'm going to offer one up. I talked to Nicholas Stevie yesterday, and she's not being able to experience the normal college life. So she really is kind of isolated in her room with her roommate. So yesterday her roommate was at work and so it was her by herself and she wasn't real happy. And um, so just, you know, that whole thing about going to college and not being able to be out with friends and roommates and making new friends and things. So just some prayers for, for Nicholas Stevie. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers.
let us now open our hearts to the silence of God's presence. Let us be silent together. Holy God, on this World Communion Sunday, we thank you for the gift of church, which we know is the gift of people bound together by commitment and faith and love and grace and mercy and peace. For the gift of our church family, we thank you that we can be together on Zoom, even though we cannot be together in person, we thank you. And we pray for people during this time who feel isolated and cut off. New college students who can't meet friends the way they normally would. People who feel unsafe going out because they may be exposed to the virus. People who feel cut off from friends and family in nursing homes and assisted living facilities. We pray that where there is a sense of loneliness and isolation, you will reveal your presence through the spirit and through other people who offer gifts of connection through words and presence, through letters and cards and phone calls, emails, texts. We pray that you help us stay connected in, in new and creative ways so that no one feels isolated or alone or lonely. And we thank you that we have this capacity as human beings to care for each other. And that when we do so from a place of faith, we do so from a place of open heartedness. And that your spirit and your love flows through our hearts into the hearts of others. And we know that this web of ever flowing love is huge and expansive. And on this Sunday, especially, we, we know that it's even global and that your love flows from person to person, church to church, community to community, country to country, and that your love takes different forms. It's expressed in different languages. It's celebrated with different rituals and sacraments. And yet we know that there is a commonality, a deep bond that is an experience of your unconditional grace and the promise that death becomes resurrection and the power of the teachings of Jesus, who is the Christ. Allow us this Sunday to appreciate the gift of our faith, the gift of our connection together, and to know that as a people of faith, through prayer we have the power to bring transformation to the world. And our prayer this morning is for peace, that your amazing grace may flow into the world and into the hearts of people who are hurting and struggling. Those who are struggling with COVID, those who are struggling with fires, those who are struggling with domestic violence, those who are struggling with racial oppression and injustice. In whatever form violence comes, we pray that your peace may also be present. We trust that you will reveal yourself in ways we may not anticipate but we also know that when our hearts are open, we will receive your presence, sometimes being surprised by the way that you choose to be with us. And so now we pray with new words, the prayer that Jesus taught us. O oh God of sky and earth, we reverence your presence, both within us and beyond. May what we eat sustain us in the way of compassionate sharing. Help us to be forgiving, forgiving others, forgiving ourselves. Liberate us from guilt, that learning from our mistakes, we may move beyond self-centeredness to that depth of being in which we are one with all things. This way of love, peace, and justice is for all the earth, for all human beings, and for all living creatures both now and forever. Amen. Lord, listen to your children pray. us 
Mi pueblo fue destruido porque le faltó conocimiento.亲爱的弟兄啊，我们应当彼此相爱，因为爱是从神来的。凡有爱心的，都是有神而生，并且认识神。没有爱心的，就不认识神，因为神就是爱。Dear friends, let's love one another because love is from God and everyone who loves is born from God and knows God. The person who doesn't love does not know God because God is love. We celebrate the written word of, God, of scripture. Thanks be to God. We celebrate the living word, Christ among us. Thanks be to God. Amen. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father, in sovereign love, God created the world good and makes everyone equally in God's image to live as one community. Kami percaya dalam Allah Roh Kudus di mana saja pemberi dan pembaharu kehidupan. Roh itu menghakimi kami dengan kasih karunia melalui iman dan mengikat kami bersama-sama dengan semua orang percaya di dalam satu tubuh Kristus. すべての信徒と共に我らの喜びは生きている時も死の時も我らの主イエスキリストにある神の愛から何者も引き離すことができないことであるアーメン And this morning's sermon comes to us from Reverend Roland Gordon, pastor at Ingleside Presbyterian Church in San Francisco on Ocean Avenue. You may have driven by it and not even remember, but this is the church um, where we saw in the prelude where all of the different uh, images are a part of the um, uh, collage in the fellowship hall that is uh, spread out over much of the church to celebrate black lives. Abba, called by many names, yet one and the same. Use me to preach your word. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Friends, as a messenger of God's word, I get excited when I receive an assignment to deliver God's Word, to shine light on God's Word, to be a blessing to all who have open minds and ears, who hear, receive, and act on the simple yet profound truth made plain by the Holy Spirit as expounded in the Word. My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge, the word of Hosea 6 shares. And friends, some crazy stuff can happen when you don't have accurate knowledge. Or if you have the truth right in front of your eyes, but you misinterpret its meaning. Or you know the truth, yet don't act based on this truth. Or if you think what you think is true, in reality, is not. Yet still, God says, my people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Knowing the confusion that would exist 
even beginning from the early church, comprised of Jews who were prejudiced against all other people, prevented by Jewish law from associating with anyone who was not of the Jewish faith, considered defiled and punished for any such violation. The first leader of the Christian church, following the resurrection and ascension, Peter, had to be taught by the Spirit accurate knowledge of the way of the one true and living God. So friends, I'm on assignment today, World Communion Sunday, to share a major lesson, not only to the Christian church, but to all humanity. Love is the answer. God is love. Beginning in the Holy Bible, the New International Version, with the word from Acts chapter 10, verse 1 and following, it is written, at Caesarea there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord, he asked. The angel answered, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven open and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles of the earth and birds of the air. Then a voice told him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I've never eaten anything impure or unclean. The boy spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you, so get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Peter went down and said to the men, I am the one you're looking for. Why have you come? The men replied, we have come from Cornelius, the centurion. He is a righteous and God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to have you come to his house so that he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the men into the house to be his guests. The next day, Peter started out with them, and some of the brothers from Joppa went along. The following day, he arrived at Caesarea. 
Cornelius was expecting them and called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him get up. Stand up, he said. I'm only a man myself. Talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, you are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with the Gentile or visit him. But God has shown me that I should not call any man impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius answered, four days ago I was in my house praying at this hour at three in the afternoon. Suddenly a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He is a guest in the home of Simon the Tanner, who lives by the sea. So I sent for you immediately, and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men and women from every nation who fear him and do what is right. What is right? I believe Jesus answers this question in Matthew chapter 22, verse 34 and following. It is written, hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replies, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Friends, Cornelius, not a follower of Christ, by his actions, sharing and showing love for God and love for his neighbor, I think clearly meets Jesus' definition of what is right. Love, which is the greatest commandment in the law. It is written in Romans 13, 8 and following. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For he or she who loves their fellow man has fulfilled the law. The commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be are summed up in this one rule. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. It is also written in our New Testament key text of 1 John 4, 7 and 8. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. And in verse 16b and 17 of 1 John 4, it is written, God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in him. In this way, love is made complete 
among us that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world we are like him like God primarily all about unconditional love and verses 20 and 21 of the same chapter of 1st John 4 it is written if anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother or sister, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother or sister whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother and sister. And so friends, even if we stopped here, and what the written word shares about Cornelius' life and Peter's realization of how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts people from every nation who fear him and do what is right, love God and neighbor. I think any truth-seeking, open-minded person, especially as Christians, would see a need to adjust what I believe is the common misinterpretation of what Jesus understood when he says in John 14, 6 and 7, in answer to Thomas' question, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answers, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. Friends, I would offer the word of 1 John 4, 6b. God is love. And Jesus, who is one with the Father, is love also. And verse 7b of 1 John 4, everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. I offer the broader interpretation that the way to the God of love is the way of love. The Cornelius had passed over at this point in his life journey. I believe the word is saying that God would have warmly welcomed him into heaven. And even though he had not yet formally known and accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior, Jesus on the day of judgment would have placed him on the right with the other sheep. And if he was still with us today, we Presbyterians might even allow him to be in our Matthew 25 fellowship to the least of these. But to give you more support to God's acceptance of Cornelius into heaven, John the Revelator, who after speaking about the sealed 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel speaks of seeing an additional great multitude in Revelations 7, verse 9 up and following. It is written. After this, John says, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count. From every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, hallelujah, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell on the ground on their faces before the throne and worship God, saying, Amen, praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Hallelujah. Friends, the story about Cornelius and Peter does not end here, but let's rush on and finish Peter's witness with verse 36 of Acts chapter 10. It too is written, you know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of peace 
through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. And now he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by the witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still speaking these words, Friends, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Hallelujah. Then Peter said, Can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus. Praise God, friends, for God's written word. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. 1 John 4, 7, B. Love is our common ground. Love is the answer Love, love is the answer. God is love. But friends, the issue of sin, disobedience to God's will and ways of love, a common human problem remains. But praise God, out of God's limitless love for all humanity, God even reveals through the prophets his love, his mercy, and plan for the forgiveness of sins, just as Peter says in verse 43 of Acts 10. It is written, all the prophets testify about him, about Jesus, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. I've rushed a little bit past my time, a life, me, so I give you an assignment of a reading from the prophet Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 53, which the scholars believe was spoken some 750 years before Jesus was born on this earth in the flesh, fully God and fully man. But I'll close this message in the words of John 3, 16, 17. It is written, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Hallelujah. <laughs> For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him, through his name. And Ephesians 1, 7 and 8, it is written, friends, in him we have redemption. Through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. Friends, love is the answer. Love is the answer, hallelujah. Love is the answer, for God is 
During this time when we are sheltering in place and we can't offer our gifts in person, you're invited to send your offerings for um, both support of the ECSM ministry and our other offerings that we're taking at this time. You can send them either online or via snail mail to Paul Fish for FCCA and for me, um, Verdell Dibdahl for the CPC side and our ad addresses are in the announcements and the e-blast. And now from within our homes, we bring to God the offerings of our hearts and our lives. May our gifts be used to bring hope, healing, freedom, and sustenance to those in need. And now may we join in a prayer of dedication. Holy God, you have given us so much. And we know that part of what you give, we can see and is tangible and touchable. And we know also that part of what you give is invisible, intangible. We can't touch it, but we can feel it. And we know that part of what you give is love. 
and that when we offer back our gifts to you, we do so with hearts filled with love. And our prayer this morning is that that love bring blessing and hope and possibility and peace and promise and grace and mercy to those who benefit from the gifts that we offer this morning. In your holiness, in your benevolence, in your infinite love, we pray that you bless what we give, for we pray in your many names. Amen. And now we have the opportunity to share in the gift of communion. And so we, we hope that you have prepared and that you have juice and bread and an open heart. And the, the service itself will be uh, introduced by Will and then one of the videos from the Presbytery will take us through a part of the service and then we'll come back live and actually receive the bread and the juice. So Will, please take us. And so we invite you to this table that's neither a Presbyterian or a UCC table, but it is the table of our Lord who invites us to participate in this joyful feast today with Christians, um, Orthodox, Catholic, Protestant, and Pentecostal around the world celebrating communion again as we come to this moment recognizing God's amazing love for all humanity. And as we recognize this love, we recognize this sacrament as a means of grace that we might be able to receive the grace of God even in the sustaining of our bodies. On this World Communion Sunday, we take our place in the global church and dine as sisters and brothers with all who have been washed in the waters of baptism, claimed as Christ's own, and welcomed into the family of God. This is our Lord's table. Our Savior invites all who trust in him to share in the feast which he has prepared. And also with you. We lift them to the Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Eternal God, by your word, you spoke creation into being. By your word, you called a people to yourself, a covenant community set in the world to love and serve you. By your word, you spoke through the prophets. And when the time was right, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, the living word, to dwell among us. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Now come Holy Spirit, come and live in us, in this bread, in this cup, in your people, one with Christ, one in the body, one in the blood, one in ministry, in this place, in every place, in this world, and in the world to come. Kao Jesus, Lu Gay Dok, Joy Gay Dok, Lu Sing Ling Hap Yap, 
，一切尊榮與榮耀全歸上帝，從今時直到永遠。阿門。So we take this bread, common, a common element of meals that we have on a regular basis, and as we come to this moment, we recognize that God has sanctified all of the world, all of the universe is um, reminding us about God's love for each and every one of us. And as we heard earlier from Reverend Roland, that God is love and that we too are love. This love that we experience as we come to this moment, we recognize that as Jesus took bread and broke it and gave it to his others, that he gave new meaning to um, a Sabbath loaf or an opportunity to be able to recognize God's amazing love and sustaining power even in these times. And then Jesus also, after the bread, took the cup and he poured it into a glass and he gave thanks. And then he said to the disciples, take and drink each one of you. And this becomes a symbol of our connection to this incredible gift of love, a manifestation of that. And it is liquid, it flows, and there's, there's a way in which I think that that reality can teach us of the power of love itself, that it, it flows. And like water, it goes into the lowliest of places. It covers all the cracks. It cannot be stopped. Its flow is very, very powerful, as is God's love as it moves through us in the ways that we serve and in the ways that we love. And so we remember that. Whenever we drink this, we do this in remembrance of Jesus. And every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us eat and drink together. The bread of heaven, amen. The cup of salvation, amen. We are one in Christ in the bread that we share. These are the gifts of God. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, for a new creation. These are the gifts of God. Every time we eat this bread, every time we drink this cup, we proclaim the risen Christ. These are the gifts of God. Amen. And let us in our many places receive the gift of God, the cup of blessing. We are one in Christ in the cup that we share.
Thank you, Reverend um, George Abdallah from the Brazilian community on the peninsula. Let us pray together. Oh God, with gratitude and praise, you have blessed and fed us in the sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us hope in the face of turmoil to remind us that in you, everything is already all right. Make us children of remembrance so that history and history lives on in us. Send us from this place with purpose and in your power, blessed, transformed, and bent toward the heart art of justice for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Yesus berkata, kerajaan sorga sudah dekat. Kamu telah memperolehnya dengan cuma-cuma. Oleh karena itu, berikanlah juga dengan cuma-cuma. Marilah kita mempersembahkan diri kita dalam pelayanan menciptakan perdamaian. Let us send each other forth with these words. We affirm that we are part of a wonderfully mysterious universe, that all life is interrelated in one vast web, that our role lies in nurturing all life and the planet itself, that human beings are genetically one family and of equal value, that every human being has the right to the basic necessities of life, that each of us is on an evolving spiritual journey and that we are called to work to create a world of justice and peace, compassion and respect. Hanaimkeso Uridrege, Singyangwa Sarangal, Kurake Shasimita, Rigo Uridrege, Unewa, Unsarer. 주셨습니다. 그것을 가지고 세상으로 나아가 우리 이웃들과 더불어 그것을 함께 나눌 수 있기를 바랍니다. 이제는 이 땅에 평화를 주시려고 오신 예수 그리스도의 구속의 은혜와 하나님 아버지의 극진하신 사랑과 성령님의 감동 감화하심이 이제 평화를 가지고 세상을 향하여 나아가는 우리 모두에게 이제부터 영원까지 함께 하시기를 
간절히 추원하옵나이다. 아멘. Amen. A little uh, blast from the past here in Karen play the organ and our denominational offerings can continue to be received for the next week or so or you can send them in by mail. We're so grateful that you joined us for worship this morning. We uh, meet every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock and you can get our information from our Facebook page. We're so glad that you joined us, and thanks for being here, everyone, and uh, have a great week. Hope to see you Tuesday or Wednesday. <laughs>